Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Obendako. I was thinking of uh, something that I've, uh, I've taken notice that uh, as humans, it, whatever that we were taught from the beginning of our lives, whatever that we were trained when we when we were children, whatever we were trained with. Whatever that they put in us, the philosophies, the trainings, the culture, the ideas that they train, in, they put in us. When we were little, or the ones that we were born into. Even when we get old, or when as we grow, as we get older. Even if those practice, practices don't give us results, don't become fruitful. Because they condition us that way. It becomes that much difficult for us to uh, even ask questions, you know. So they 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 they, they, they introduce you to some practices in, in this life, you know, and and you continue to use your resources, your time to do it. And sometimes when you look back, you see that you just spending time, you just spending resources. But we are not um, usually most people, majority of the people of this world will never ask. This thing that I was introduced to, this thing that I've been doing for the last 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, uh, the last five years, is it beneficial? Am I getting return for the investment that I, I have put in? The investment of my time, the investment of uh, my gift, the investment of everything that they told me that if I should, uh, if I do, I will get. We hardly ask questions. Why? Because it was put in us. And that is the advantage that uh, people get the system the structures that control masses of people get because of what was placed in them even was what was placed in us is a lie we hardly will question anything we just follow by default even if it's unfruitful you know so i'm talking about get organized they 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 they, they, they a lot of people give us hope uh talk to us that things will change um they give us a lot of uh, 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 good talks that things will change. But I have seen that life is that short and life is that limited in terms of time. And if you want things to improve in your life, things will only improve when you start to get organized in the areas that you want things to improve. Things will not improve just because you hope that things will improve, just because somebody said that things will improve. And that's what I think Africa is 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 a bit uh, deficient in, where the, the 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 things that they told us when we were young, the things that they gave to us, even if they are not producing results, we still continue to do them. We don't even question to say that can we do it differently. And so, for instance, today is Sunday. A lot of us would go to church and come back, and and maybe eighty percent of the church is is waiting for God to help us. We are praying to God to get a lot of things that we want. You know, people want money, people want good life, people want promotion in their work. And most people will just go to, to church just because of that. And if they just say that go to church uh, for the fact that uh, you just love God, mm, I think that most people will not go to church. You see, the, the lack, the poverty, the pains of life push, push a lot of people to seek God. It is good that we seek God, but it's also an error for for the people who teach us to continue to tell us that things will get better knowing very well that our personal lives we are not able to get a lot of things organized and they still hope and pray for us that things will get better and i think that is uh, that is not the complete picture of god because if you look at the creations of life if you look at what uh, if you look at everything that god made you can see organization before there will ever be change, before there will ever be growth, before there will ever be anything significant, there has to be organization. There has, you know, you want to change your personal life. If you don't organize your time, if you don't organize your mind, if you don't organize your knowledge, if you don't organize your personal culture, not much will change. You know, you want to improve your finances. If you have trouble with my finances and I don't get organized, I don't learn how things are structured well, it's not going to change. The proof of hope is the perseverance that you apply. And so they, 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 it, that's why I was saying that if they put something in you, 
even if it was wrong, it would be very hard for us to question it because it was put in us right from the beginning. And that's the advantage that people have because they can always refer to what was put in us and, and take and, and continue to push that and we will just follow without questioning anything if, even if you are not getting results, even if you are not getting uh, 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 productivity out of it. And so today we will push a lot of hours in churches all over Africa, not only in Ghana, in Nigeria, in South Africa, in Kenya, all of Africa. And it's not our heart to love God, and it's not our heart to love people, but it's more of what will change in my life. And I think that if we have to go to church for just what will change in my life, then a lot of it is dependent on us than what is in church. A lot of it is, is more of what do I have to get organized in my personal life. Because just the prayer will not change anything. And if you have looked at it for the last 10, 20 years, and the things that they told you, much of the things that they even teach people in terms of growth in their personal life, they take the responsibility of the people. And I don't think that you are going to get things changing in your life if you are not responsible for anything. And these are the facts of life. If you're not responsible for your finances, if you're not responsible uh, to put your head together, if you're not responsible to change the things that you want to change in your career, in your business, in your family, things will not change. Yet, I can see people who have a lot of education, who have some professional background, and every Sunday they will go and sit under this man who cannot read, who cannot write, and he's teaching you how to live. And the only reason that you are there is because he mentioned the name of God. And I think that's one of the reasons why Africa has a lot of trouble in terms of productivity, in terms of development, in terms of us being able to fight poverty. Because we have hanged our brains and we are using uh, just the, the God factor. But this God, if I look at anything in the Bible, if I read the Bible, if I, really, if, if I look at the life of Jesus, I see someone, someone who was very wise, who was organized, who had understanding of, of a lot of things and how, how, how things worked. If this God created this earth and you look at the precisions in creation, then I wonder how this you can work with this God and, and still be that disorganized. So if indeed what they are teaching us is right and is appropriate, why is Africa that disorganized? If, if the thinking that they have given us on God is right, and if what is in the Bible is right, why are we still that much disorganized? Why are we still waiting for this God who said that, prove me, to change things in our lives? If, 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 our, if things are, what they teach us in the Bible is so, so right, why is it that we don't, we don't even have value for one another's life? Why is it that we don't respect people's life why is it that the love is so limited and so I, I said that things are not going to improve on our life in our lives until we get organized this hope this faith these miracles that they have told us to wait for and people will cry and weep you go to any place anywhere in churches they're just being sold hope 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 and things continue to be the same all the time People still go through abject poverty, abject lack. They live on very limited money. And usually, if you see a lot of people with any material increase at all, a lot of them are just through, you know, ways and means. Ways and means. But if they were to apply the right principles, and if they were to be honest, a lot of people would not even have the sufficient income for the, for the family. You know? So, they're giving us hope, but they have not told us that we are responsible for the hope, that the creation of the hope, that the realization of the hope. And I've, I think that has been a dragging force on Africa, and it's continue, it will continue to be a dragging force on, on Africa in, and in our bid to fight poverty. Because our heart for God is being taken advantage of by a lot of people. Nowadays, you, you see any young man anywhere, any, any young man, and he opens church. And what is he teaching? He's never lived anywhere, he's never practiced anything, he's never worked anywhere, and he's preaching church. And he's telling you that God will change, God will change you. And this guy has never applied any of the principles that he's teaching. He's never done anything with his life. And you suspend everything that you're doing. You go every Sunday, four hours for him to teach you things that will never improve you. And you go back Monday, you go back to the same work and you are cutting corners. You are, you are doing all kind of dubious things just to get by. And I don't think that's the right way for God to work. God is a man, is a God of principles. He has his, his word and he, he doesn't do anything 
out of disruption, out of uh, chaos. It gets organized. And so if they are giving you hope, it is good. But the hope is proven in what you're doing, your perseverance, your organization, how you can do things rightly. If those things don't set, your only hope in this life will be uh, contingent on another man who is uh, uh, repre representing God in our, in our lives. And, and, and I think that that introduction of, of Christianity is a problem for Africa. It's a problem for Africa. And uh, I see that a lot of people have, have started to see it. It's not that people don't love God, no. But the modalities and how God has been projected and how God has been uh, presented to us, uh, we have been taken advantage of. For you to tell a man that his life will change, even if he de doesn't get anything organized. You just want to pray for him and declare fast. And people declare all kind of fasting for people all the time. And it's, it's, it's painful to see people, people, precious people, believe that lie. Some of them are professional. Some of them have gone to school. And we, it doesn't even occur to us that we have to ask questions. We have to ask questions and, and see what if the information they are giving to us is really the right information or the, it's not the right information. And so far, if you look at our results as a continent, a lot of the information that they have given on, to us in terms of God and what he does, a lot of them, uh, we have to question them because the heart of the people, the dishonesty, the, the, the value that we don't have for another person, the love that is in... Is in, is in is lacking the organization the excellence these are all the nature of god so if you if you follow god why don't we have this why don't we may not be born with it but can we follow god for 20 years and we don't see this kind of this part of god and it's only the power and the supernatural that we get to get all the time that will not change your life so your life is going to improve when you get organized at least prepare be ready and then you see out of that preparation out of that organization things will start to to get better and 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 if you pick the Bible and read the Bible if you can shut your mind down as to the interpretation that they have given to you on every verse and just start to read the Bible as a as a practical book to change your life you will see you will see that if things don't organize in your life nothing is going to improve nothing is going to improve and that's why there's a lot of uh, a lot of you know what people are complaining of corruption yes corruption will happen not because people are evil but because people have been taught that which does not work you have just been taught that if you want money bring money and then everything will change you are go you are not going to be a billionaire or millionaire just because you gave money to church give money to your church is good but you are going to change your finances in, on a big scale, if, you are, if you're going to be honest, is when you start to apply the principles that have to do with productivity and that have to do with, you know, production of products, products, services. That's how people get rich, the honest ones. The, any other one, in Africa, 90% of what we do is just about contract, contract largely, and contract from government. And we all know the processes that we go through to get contract from government. So if we say that we believe in God and we trust God and there is character, you know that there's a lot of these things. We will stay out of them. We will stay out of them. So get organized. Put your head to work. Ask questions. It does not mean you doubt God. You don't doubt God, but there are a lot of things that if you sit down well and you look at the masses of Africans who are going to church every day, things must be different things must be different and a whole group of people can be conditioned to be to think wrongly and they may not even uh, uh, know it and if you get up to question anything you will be deemed uh, or you'll be tagged as somebody who is not for God and yet all of us we are for God but how this God has been introduced to us sometimes people go to the mala and he tells you all these things you know that you have gone to the mala and he's, he's telling you that bring this bring this bring this and if you can get that bring money you know that is about them. But there are a lot of people who are also saying that they're Christians, they're pastors, who are requesting the same thing. But you go there thinking that God is talking. And that is not true. God is not talking like that. God requires you to be organized. God requires you to put your house in order. And when you are organized, things will start to work. No matter the mistakes that you have committed, things will start to work when you get organized. 
when you get organized so put your finances together don't just hope and wait for god to come and change your finances for you don't just hope wait for god to change your marriage for you don't just hope that your, your health will just change because somebody has prayed for you and i think they are even praying for the economy whilst there are a lot of nations around the world who are not praying for economy they just get things organized because the principles of god the laws of god are more powerful than the interventions of god that which produces consistent growth and consistent pro uh, 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 productive life is from the application of the principles and the laws of God than just the interventions. The interventions are just for when, 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 for instance, uh, you have a sickness, you didn't plan for it, nothing, and then they prayed for you and it goes. But if you know that your the food that you've been eating is wrong, you change that. You don't, you know, if you, for instance, if you, maybe you're overweight, things like that, you don't, you are not going to pray for God to reduce the weight. You just have to look at the food that you're eating. Maybe if your finances are wrong and you don't understand money, you're not just going to pray that God, even if God does the intervention, that which will bring consistent, persistent, predictable growth will come because you have sat down to plan and get organized. And this they have taken from Africans. And if you look around, it's painful. It's painful. And that's why most African nations are still not developed. Because we don't believe in getting things done rightly, getting things done rightly, getting organized. It's just about, oh, Nyami Beye, God will do it, Nyami Beye. And they told us when we were children, and we still, you know, we are in our adult, and they're still telling us God will do it. And I, I, I am a bit more hesitant to hear that God will do it. God has equipped us. God has given us his laws. If you want to get pregnant with your wife, you don't wait for God. In, in, a, in a special situation where, you know, you are finding it difficult to conceive, that could be the miraculous, you know, you could wait for miracles. But if, they, if, they, if they, everything is right, you don't wait for God to, to sleep with a woman. You go and sleep with the woman because you want. It's the same. If you want seed, if you want to plant your seeds in the land, that you're a farmer, you don't, you're, not playing for, you're not praying to God for, for the seeds to be planted. you a farmer. You go, you do your part. You know, and I've seen that if you do your part, a lot of things will change without even waiting. Because the richest people in the world are not going to church every Sunday praying to God for money. Because they have applied the wisdom of God, the principles of God. You know, they have applied a lot of things that God has established in this life. And once you apply them, things will change. So if you are going to go to God every Sunday just for our personal lives to change, and they continue to teach us that, it's an error. A lot of the things that in people's personal life will change when the people are told to be responsible for their lives. To be responsible for their lives. And so people create all kind of scenarios, things that will never happen in your life. They create them and give you solution. And if you chase mirage, and a lot of people chase mirage out of the fear and the programming that, that the institutions are taking advantage of and largely uh, the way church is done in Africa, you know. So we, we say that we are about 80% Christians and yet our heart for one another, all of Africa, the value that we place on the lives of people, it's amazing. And we think that the work of God is when you go to church. You serve God when you, goes to, you go to church to raise your hand. You serve God, the love that you show to that person. The, the, the respect that you show, the honesty that you, you have at the workplace, the proof of the talent that God has given you. Those things have a lot to do with God than just you going to God to pray in church for your personal lives to change. That is far from Christianity. And they should tell us that. That is far from Christianity. They should tell, tell us that. Get organized if you want things to change in your life and stop waiting for God to change everything in your life. You could wait for a very long time and it will not change. And the thing about it is that the one who is telling you to wait for God, when he finished, he took the offering. He did not wait for God to bring the offering. He took the offering. He asked you for the offering. He asked you for the tithe. You know, so there's a lot that we have to ask as Africans if you are going to develop. The continent continues to wallow in poverty, in lack, and everybody we are slap on a lot of people's face. Our governments are going everywhere asking for money, and most of these governments don't even believe in God, but they have taken advantage of the principles that work. That's why we continue to go to them. Yes, there are complexities in our history. There are things that we didn't ask for, 
but there are things that we can change and part of it is getting organized getting organized you work in an institution you say that there is no money in that institution yet the car bombs are everywhere that one does not take money that one is just somebody if you're organized and you have the spirit of excellence you you get 10 cd or 20 cd uh, 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 for people to clean you see so getting organized and, and not having money at least the level that you have from the level that you are you can get things in place and if you look at our cities it's not money that we need to get a lot of things right it's just that we are not told to to believe uh, to to practice and to and to live that if we want growth if we want improvement if we want things to change in our lives they will start by getting organized by getting organized by getting organized and the thing is that the introduction of this Christianity in Africa there is an error there's an error it's tough but there's an error because we were just waiting for the supernatural. We were just waiting for the miracles. We were just waiting for that. And so when you employ somebody to work with you, they're waiting for God to intervene. When the perennial, you know, the, the water, the flooding, you see we are in the, in the dry season. We have forgotten, you know. When you get to the rainy season, then you see that you should pray. But this should have been the time that the government or the authorities thinking of what what canals can we establish what do we have to do to make sure that the water when they are pouring they can be channeled rightly no so it's the same it's the same from the top It's the same from the bottom you know and we carry that unfortunately we carry that to our private lives where things that don't work we're still waiting for God to come and solve them and we have been waiting for far too long it's not changing because God is not responsible for the things that we have to change we are responsible for the for the things that we have to change so get organized if you are not organized if you're not getting organized in terms of your financial knowledge in terms of your professional life in terms of even how you understand god and what you have been conditioned they put a lot of <laughs> wrong things in us they have put a lot of wrong things in us so people are always waiting looking up to god to change a lot of things we're looking up to god to change a lot of things and so we don't even look at you know the things that we can practice to change a lot of the, 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 the narratives that we see across Africa. But the good thing is that the young people have seen it. The young people are seeing this. They're asking a lot of questions. And for me, it's not because they don't love God. It's not because they don't want to go to church. But they want to ask, is this true? Is this working? Is, this, is it as real as well? We just have to go to church every Sunday, go to church every Sunday, spend five hours, six hours, seven hours, and our lives is still the same. We still come back, still dishonest, still disorganized, still begging people, and we say that we serve a living God, we serve an omnipotent God. How could that be? It's not true. If I open the Bible, I see another way. I see that the diligent hand will prosper. I see that one. I see that uh, uh, the, the, the wisdom is justified by his children. I see that one. I see that God is a God of truth. I see that. I see that God is a God of love. So if you say that you know Christ, if you say that you go to church every Sunday, and you see, they, they have put it in us, and so that we will continue to go to church every Sunday, which is good. Go to church. But the information that they are giving you is relevant. Does not work? The man that is teaching you, what is he teaching you? Because you will not go to university if that man, that lecturer, could not read, could not write. You will not go for that man to teach you. You say that, no, this lecturer does not know what he's teaching. he's teaching. Yet we can go every Sunday to churches where the man cannot even read, cannot write, does not know what he's talking about. But because he has mentioned the name of God, we go there for, to be taught. And for me, that is a tough thing because religion is, a, is such a volatile subject and it controls everything and, and it's, it's, it's complex. People can debate and fight. And, and, but we look at our resources as Africans and the results prove otherwise that if you believe in the omnipotence of God, if you believe in the intelligence of God, if you believe in the kindness of God, the loving kindness of God, why is it not showing in our daily lives? Why why are we still doing the bad things that we do from Monday to Saturday? And then from get to Sunday, we go to church. And they will say that, oh, it's, it's human nature. It's not human nature. It's the information that they have, they have given us. It's the information that they have given, given us about God that is responsible for the way we are behaving. <laughs>
you know, for the way we are behaving. So they have shown in our work ethics, they have shown in how we treat one another, they have shown in how we take responsibility for another person's uh, property, the way we handle the government issues, you know, the way we even treat people, the way we show. They have taught us. Sometimes you see people who are coming from this uh, so-called civilized life. They don't even know God, but you see how they handle issues. They, you see how they handle people. You see how they try to be organized and, and honest. They do that. Yet we have been taught God, and we have been taught God such that we wait for God. We hope in God. We have faith in God. So God will solve everything for us. God will wait. We, God will do everything for us. That is not true. And when I was a child, they told us that. Now they are still telling us that. It's not true. A lot of the people who are teaching us every Sundays, the topics that they are even talking about, they have no clue. And a lot of them, the only reason you see them prosper is because we continue to bring a lot of the offering and a lot of the tithes to them. That's why they get, continue to get ahead. And it's a volatile subject when you ask that is, they think that you are challenging God. No. But the masses, the poverty of the people continue. Now I think that if God is a God of compassion, he has questions on this kind of people where a lot of them are still poor, a lot of them are still giving wrong knowledge on God. And then they tell us that we're still serving God. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And so we have to ask questions. We have to ask questions and ask a lot of the, the questions, that a lot of the stuff that they taught, they taught. They told us about God. They told us about God. And so today, Sunday, for instance, everybody goes to church. We are praying in church and dancing and shouting. And tomorrow, <laughs> we go and do the same thing that you told us 50 years ago. Then why do we have to go to church? And you see, the countries that are not serving God, we are the ones looking for visa to go to those countries. You go to most of these churches who are preaching, they are praying for people to get visas to go to America, to go to England. Isn't it? Isn't that uh, uh, an error in itself? That you are teaching us God, that God is a God of, of power, God of excellence, God of wisdom. And yet we are going to these people that we think don't know God. And we call it a blessing for us to get their visas and go there. And we sit here and say that we serve God. We have understood God from one point. The other point of him is the organization side getting organized at every level from the personal level from the company level from the national level in our thinking in the way we treat issues in the way we treat life in the way we treat things other than that we will just go to church go to church go to church and nothing will change in our lives except the hope they give us that things will improve and sometimes when nothing is improving they will still tell you that count your blessing do you have to count your blessing you, you will see the blessings they will be uncountable you don't need another man to tell you to count your blessings if you're indeed blessed. <laughs> if you're indeed blessed, they told you that you'll be prosperous. They told you that you'll be prosperous. Now that the prosperity is not coming, they are teaching you that to count your blessing. Because the prosperity is a product of being organized. It's, it's a product of th getting things done rightly. You know, so the country is not going to develop just by people praying for the country. That is not true. The country is going to develop as we have a lot of people getting organized and getting serious with the, with the positions that they, they, they have, get putting things as they're supposed to be, to, be, to, be, to be, making sure that processes are done rightly. You know, if you're not handling our waste well, people will get sickness. It's simple as that. If you're not handling the water system well, people will get sickness. If the head process, the head delivery process is not handling well, people will die and die anyhow. If the way people drive is not get is not organized, accidents will continue to happen. It's as simple as that. Then instead of us getting things organized, we are the ones praying to God, waiting for God to change things. And God is not the one going to get the country organized. Getting organized is our duty as people. Is our duty as people so nothing will change until we get organized until you see corruption is a product of chaos it's a product of disorganization you know poverty lack pain they are all proof that some things are not organized they are just proof of that we have not understood the basis the basis of how anything is developed how anything is grown 
you know so the pain the pain is a proof that something is not right that's why that's why when you get pain in your leg it means that something is out of order just as, just, as, just as that when we get the lack when the poverty is consistent it means that something is not right so we go back and look at that which is not right and set that rightly and then you see that it will be when you are going to Kumasi and the block the road is blocked you see that the, tra the traffic starts to pile why because something is not right there the moment you remove those cars on the street or on the road this traffic starts to flow same so on if they don't teach the people how to organize and work and the level of our organization will decide the level of our development the level the precision of our, you know the precision that we get in terms of how we get things done will be how we get the prosperity to this continent and and the continent is endowed with everything and that which we don't have is getting organized in the minds of the people in the culture those are the ones that are missing and that's why we continue to struggle and our growth is that slow 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 why because we have taken that element which is so crucial which is getting organized and so if you can get organized in our personal lives you have gone to school why do you let this be? somebody comes to tell you something you know is not true but he opens God's word and you believe it because when you mention the name of God people stop to reason and yet God said come and reason with me when you ask questions they say that you don't believe in Christ if you believe in Christ you ask questions you ask questions why are you telling the people this why the man himself did not do that why are you telling people to come you pray on this then they go and put it in their room then God where is God's wisdom where is God's power why you know and so uh, you have trouble in the family and then they give you something to you that go and put it in your room and things will change that is not Christianity that's another thing that's not Christianity that's like going to the Milan you know, so we, we the, 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 it, because the the background that we are coming from is the problem, the background how we 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 were cultured is the problem, and that seed is still in us. And so anybody who connects to that can easily control all of us, all of us, every one of us. Once they, even if you see something that is not right, you still find it difficult to make the right decision because it was put in us to love God. It was put in us to listen to God. It, you know, you hear God in almost every phrase that we have. But it's just that God. But how about the way God operates? How does he does? How does he do his things? The people who are producing cars in the factory, they have principles that they are following. That's why they are producing the cars. The countries that are developed, they have things that they follow. And we live in chaos. And we are praying to God. God is telling us, <laughs> get organized. Get organized. If you don't get organized, you'll be the one you are crying to God and you still go to Japan who don't, who don't call on God. You go to Germany, you go to all these people. You see, we say that they don't call on God, but really they are using the things that work. And those knowledge, those principles came from the same creation that God did. Because you study the creation, you see, you see how things are organized. You study creation, you see how things are organized. You go to the sea and see. Uh, go to why is the sea not coming to cover all the earth? It will start to come when we, we get a lot of things disorganized. So, if you look at nature and as it is, a lot of things that God created, the base of it is organization. So, we are not going to build on that creation, we are not going to improve on that creation when we cannot get anything organized. The gutter is everywhere. We don't send the people to school. We don't train them. And we say that God will do it. That's why God is not doing it. And God is not going to do it anyway. The poverty will increase until we get organized. Until we try, we start to use his word. You know, because if you look at Jesus himself, the things that he taught, he taught more about how to get things done rightly than any other thing. And any other thing he taught people he taught how to you know the parable of the talent the parable of the kingdom the parable of the, if you look at how the man taught things he taught people to get wisdom to get knowledge to get understanding and out of that you live we they are telling us that <laughs> you know it's not important god we saw it and the people are still growing you told them when they were 15 years now they are 25 years and you are still telling them that 
And a lot of them, the only reason they have anything is because if they have anything about that, it's not because it's, they are not proof of their wisdom. Most of them are just taking advantage of the of, of a disorganized environment, you know. So they do a lot of dubious things to get money, and then they come to tell you that God has blessed them. And we all know that a lot of it is not God. It's just that you took advantage of the system and you cut a lot of corners, and you know that they are against your values and your principles. And they are even against this God, this 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 God that you serve. And so until we get organized, the prosperity is not going to come. Until we get organized, the diseases will continue, the accidents will continue, the the the, the things that we don't want to hear, they will continue to happen until we get organized. Look at the look at any time that they want to tell us. <laughs> uh, what is it? Uh, sometimes you're going to come as you sit in the car. This guy will come and preach and tell you that God will protect you. Yes, those in America, when they are traveling, they travel, they just sit in the car and go. Only in Africa, the demon is here. Why? And these things happen because we are not organizing the things. We are not streamlining things. The transport is still chaotic. The guy who is driving the car cannot even read, cannot write. And we don't see anything wrong with it. We think that, just let it go. And then the next minute, there's a major accident, and somebody will come and say that it's demonic. It's not demonic. It's just a proof of a disorganized society. It's as simple as that. So the more, if you have gotten organized, we have gotten organized, then we will see better results in that. The more we start to get organized, the more we see things uh, done rightly. If you look at the last elections, the moment they started to organize, especially the opposition, started to organize the arsenals together. You see, it shifted because people will take advantage of a disorganized environment for their selfish gain. They don't care. So far as it's benefiting them, they will never want it to organize. But good people, kind people, good-hearted people godly people want equity for everybody and that's why they fight for the system to be fair to be organized to be streamlined so that the poverty will go down so anytime that you see anybody who does not want anything to be organized you are looking at a person who is selfish and is always only thinking of himself and a lot of people are like that so when you they talk of african leadership african leadership if you see them not streamlining anything you see a man who is only thinking of himself who's only thinking of his family we see a man who is wicked we see a man who does not care about any other person so far as it benefits him you see a good man if any time a good man climbs the, the 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 seat the things you see is that because he's not thinking of himself he start to see things that can be done correctly because he's not in a lot of things organized you see that they are selfless they're selfless and if you look at that you see advantage of us they take advantage of us they take advantage of us they take advantage of us because they're selfish because your ignorance and our disorganization and our immaturity fits their personal agenda you know it fits their personal agenda so when you go to any place that they're teaching you whether it's church whether it's school look at what they're teaching you is it premise on you getting organized or they are just calling something from the air to say that it will change everything that you're doing that is not the way if anybody is teaching you that it's like teaching the slave <laughs> teaching the slave uh, the slave master teaching the slave freedom <laughs> they will not teach you the slave uh, they will not teach you freedom if you are the slave it's just the one who can set the slave free because he's setting the slave free because he's selfless he has a good heart he's kind so he wants things to done rightly to be done rightly and so so long as you a lot of you see a lot of especially people who have gone to college god you have gone to college you, you they don't you don't even use our head anymore because you they, you look at your time you look at your resources and how you are using them and you still hope that your life will change just because somebody said it your life is not going to change just because somebody said it your life is a reflection of how you're using your time and how you're how you're using your your, your money and if you're, if you're not organizing your thought in terms of how you, you are using your time and how you're using your money, what makes us believe that tomorrow will be different? Tomorrow is not going to be different until we get organized in how we use our resources. And it doesn't matter who is telling you. And it doesn't matter the title that they have given themselves. It doesn't matter. God is the one who gave his word. All the other ones are servants. You know, and servants can be wrong. Sometimes servants can be even not, not, they may not even know that what they are teaching you 
it's not working because it's working just for them but if you look at the masses you see that things are not as they are preaching things are not as they are telling us and we should be asking questions we should be asking questions we should be asking questions so the best of god is built on on, on getting organized getting organized at the personal level this continent this country is not going to change no matter how much prayer they pray if we can't get our people organized reason as human beings use their head be, be clean be committed to excellence if we don't get that nothing is going to change so simple as that if you are praying for anybody to get into leadership we should be praying for somebody who is organized somebody who is thoughtful somebody who is selfless somebody who is wise that's how things will change. If that person does not have those things in his life or in her life, when he gets there, it's disorganization. And if the top is disorganized, all the nation will be disorganized. And the poverty will continue, the lack will continue, people will, will die early, unemployment will continue. These are facts. So nations develop because people who can get things done rightly are there. That's why things change. So things don't change because of all the all the you know all the things that they have continued to tell us all the time they are not changing because they are not systemic systems organize things you know systems for instance are proof of organization so if you're not organizing things in the government machinery if you're not organizing things in the education in the health in the ways in the in the contracts that we are giving if your things are done just wrongly we're just dissipating the resources of the country and the people will be the one who will suffer you know, if the religious organizations are not teaching the right things. Today, how many man hours have we compressed in Sunday? Go to church, pray to God to change our lives. And God is waiting for you to change your life. You know, to change your lives. And sometimes you may be a professional, you know a lot of things, but you hang those things and listen to someone who is teaching you something that he has not even done. It's amazing. It's amazing a lot of people teaching people in the temples all across the country have never done what they are teaching you they, they are preaching to you to get prosper prosperity and they had nothing until they started to, to receive offering it's amazing so we have to you know if it's your life it's your life and you, if you're going to leave you're going to leave so change your life to ch charge of your life if you have problem you have problem talk to God yourself you know and people are looking for baby and they will go to Malam, they go to all these people, they give them all kind of chemicals to drink. I'm like, ah. so is it by force that you have to have a child? Who told you that your mother is a witchcraft? Your mother gave birth to you. She didn't kill you. And now that you go to this church, they are telling you that your brother is a witchcraft, your sister is, is, a, is a, what is a witch, witch, and you believe it and now you don't even talk to them anymore. Where is your head? If you so believe that God's power is powerful and your brother or your sister is a witch, why can't you change them with the, with, the, with the God's power that you think you have? When you see hatred, you are seeing evil. The kingdom of God, the gospel, is gospel of value for human lives. Love, kindness, organization. So if you not see this, <laughs> uh, nothing will change so it, sometimes they even destroy you sometimes a lot of people would have been better if they didn't go to any of these places in the first place a lot of people would have been better if they didn't go their lives would have been better if they didn't go to a lot of these places that they are teaching them all kind of things that are not christianity and yet that's what we go through in africa every sunday and when people start to question us we say that they are not christians they are christians but they see god operate in a different form and we have picked God because you see, when you are selfish and when you don't when you're selfish, you don't have value for life. And when you don't have value for life, every revelation that you have is built on your selfishness and it's built on control and it's built on taking advantage of people. And so far as you are benefiting, no matter your position, once you are benefiting, you think that everything is all right. And that's what we get to see. And so the revelations of people that they say God is giving a revelation, they are all built on what which benefits them the better benefits their, their career benefits their family and so far as they are growing they don't care whoever is not growing because if you really believe what you're teaching at a point you go back and take stock say that i've taught these people this thing is it true where are their lives is are they changing and most of these people that you have taught them all this that god will help them god will help them if you go back to look at their lives their lives are still backward they have even 
depreciated in terms of the value that they brought initially you know because they have put the head to hold and now they are waiting for you and all the things that you do for them and they are waiting for you to tell them everything to do they have lost their value so get organized if you want to change your life get organized and you are responsible for the things a lot of the things that happen in your life you are the one responsible and until you get organized in your thoughts in your finances in your family until you start to have value for yourself value for another person respect for god respect for authority until you get to organize that and live off some of these things that they, they continue to control you with the supernatural the, the power the miracles that they continue to control you with if you don't stay out of that your life will never change your life will never change so any little boy anywhere is now apostle pastor uh, reverend doctor and he didn't after school they didn't work anywhere national service they didn't finish they, they are teaching things that they have not even practiced they have no proof of it and you you have practiced for 40 years 30 years and you hang all those experiences and go to listen to them and you call them father daddy and all those things that we they call them and will be tells you if you challenge them it's amazing africa it's amazing that almost everything that we pick we pick them wrongly we pick them wrongly we pick them wrongly we pick democracy wrongly we have even picked christianity wrongly education wrongly maybe let's hope so thank you very much thank you very much i hope i've not caused a stir but uh, that is true if you look at the the, 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 the poverty the pain the, the disruption uh, you, you sit in the trotro, you look at the, the, the pain. The trotro, the people are sweating, and the guy is still holding Bible, trying to preach to them on what? You know, the people are in the car, they are sweating, and you're still opening the Bible and talking about something you don't even know. And when you finish, you ask for offering. Everybody takes advantage of us. Everyone. Everyone. And you dare even question it, the people themselves, because they've been so much beat down, they've been so much trampled, and there's so much fear because everybody wants to go to heaven, which is good, but you're not going to go to heaven because that man is preaching God to you. You're going to go to heaven because of the finished work of Christ. You know, so they create a lot of fear and a lot of panic in the people. There's no self value. And nobody questions anybody who comes in the name of God, even if it's wrong. And a lot of them are wrong. Every every station, every lorry, lorry station that you go, somebody who is holding a mic, talking and insulting everybody there. The other time, I, I remember I was passing through town, and the guy was insulting everybody. I told him, I said, oh boy, what you're saying is true. And he got angry, he started to insult me. And that was a proof that what he's saying is for himself, it's not from God. If you had the heart of God, if you have the heart of God, you have love for people, you are patient with people, you are forgiving, you are kind to people. That's the nature of Christ. That's the nature of Christ. So this Christianity is powerful, but at the moment it's being used to control our people. And anybody at all can easily jump and open the Bible and, and talk and the people will follow and they feel like they are nothing. You know? Uh, familiar spirit, all kind of things that they talk about. Africa, Africa. So, open the Bible for yourself, and if they take the humanity, the kindness of God from you, if they tell you that everything will, will be alright, even if you're not get, getting organized and studying the thing that you're doing, it's not going to be alright. It's not going to be alright. If you don't get the basis right, if you're doing business and things are tough, it's on you to go and sit down and plan and look at how you're using your money, how you're resourcing your business. Are you even in the right business? Do you have the passion for the business? Is, are there prospects for that business? Are you cut for that business at all? If you don't guess those facts right, forget about what they are preaching to you. And once a while, out of thousands, they will bring somebody to give testimony. But you have no clue the authenticity, uh, the genuineness of, 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 the, of the testimony and even the genuineness of the money and how they follow the process together. You have no clue. You know, so you are going to control your life when you get organized. Get organized and build your life from there. And you'll be happy that you'll be a man who has value for yourself, value for others, value for God, heart for people. You'll be somebody who will live a selfless life, a kind life, life which is built on wisdom, on knowledge, on understanding.
and not just life who you are waiting for prophecy from another person every day before you move people live in a lot of fear they cannot even go out without waiting for another phone call from somebody why then why did Christ come to live and die if another person had to be in the Christ in your life then why did he come you know so I don't see that in Apostle Paul's journey in the Bible I don't see that in a lot of places but I see that all over Africa now and it's, it's deviating so quickly that a lot of people now, oh God, a lot of people. I've lost it. I've lost it. I've lost it. So, so thank you very much. The proof of your heart for God is your heart for people, the love that you exhibit for people, the accuracy, the belief, the organization, the excellence that you see in your life. That is the proof of your heart for God. And your life that you live will change people for Christ. It's not intimidation. It's not you telling them they will never go to heaven. There's not that fear and panic that they try to create to us that you will lose all your money, you will get accident, somebody will kill you, those things. They are not from God. They just want to control you. And they've been doing that for ages. So now people believe that that is the right thing. But that is an error. He who the son sets free shall be free indeed. So thank you very much for watching. I'm not a pastor. Thank you very much for watching.